Hi everyone, welcome. In this video, we are going to cover simple mediation analysis using the package LAVAN, so structural equation modeling in LAVAN, um, which is a package for uh, the software R, the language R. So I'm going to go to R Studio now. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so um, this first part, I'm not going to comment too much on uh, because it uh, really is um, just uh, some generation of a, a fictional uh, data set. Um, however, I will note that here we have three variables in this data frame, which I'm going to call data. Uh, in this data frame, I have three variables, X, M, and Y. X is my independent variable, M is my mediator and y is my dependent variable. So I'm going to run all of this, and I will put uh, this code uh, in the description so you can uh, directly copy and paste it. Or Of course, you can also use your, your own data here. I'm going to run this. OK. And, uh, and so if we look at this data set, it looks like this. I have x, m, and y. Um, so. First off, what we're going to do to do this mediation analysis is we're going to load the library LAVAN. If you haven't uh, installed LAVAN yet, you could go on Packages and type um, and um, click Install and then type LAVAN and then click Install and it will uh, directly install it. But I already have it installed, so I'm going to load this library. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify my model. So a model in LAVAN is specified using a, a, a chunk of text, basically. Um, so I'm going to create my model object like this. I'm going to go to a new line. And I am now going to create all of my effects. I'm going to specify all of my regression effects. Um, so let's start. So first off, we're going to here put the direct effect of x on y. Okay, this little uh, hashtag uh, symbol says that this is not really run, this is just commented. We can use commenting in the Levin syntax. So I'm going to go to a new line now, and I'm going to say that y, my variable y, is predicted by, so is regressed on, it's not a way of saying it, some um, viable x um, and, and here, of course, uh, I'm using y and x, but uh, you should here use the uh, variable names that you have in your data frame, in the data frame that you will be using. Um, the other thing I will do here is I will give a label to the regression slope here. Um, so I could give really any, uh, any label. Um, in most textbooks, you know, people call the effects A, B, C, and things like that. Um, I think perhaps it's... <clears throat> Perhaps it's easier to just uh, call it, uh, let's say, something like x to y. And I'm going to do this. So this will create a regression, and the slope is going to be named this way. I could also call it direct. Would be a, but I'm going to do that a little bit later. But that's uh, really up to you. I, I would say use the naming system that works for you. The second part um, is I'm going to say that x predicts the mediator. Okay. So here I have an effect of x on the mediator. It looks exactly the same way. So here I have the mediator predicted by x. I'm going to name this effect as well. So let's call it very un, uh, in, in using the same system x to m. And I'm going to use an asterisk to say that here I'm naming the slope for um, this uh, this effect, the effect of x on m. What else do I need? I need to specify the effect of m, the mediator, on the on the dependent variable y. So effect of m on y. Same system. So y is predicted by m, and I'm going to name this effect using the same system. It would be m to y. Okay, so now I have all of my fx. But another thing I need to do here is specify my different is relabel, so to speak, my different fx. So I have a direct effect, I have an indirect effect, and 
um, maybe I could study the total effect, or maybe I could study the proportion of the effect that is mediated. So we're going to label now new, uh, uh, new effects. So let's do that very simply. Label effects. So to label the effects, we will use this. So let's see. So the first thing I want to label, let's say it's the direct effect. So direct effect, let's call it direct. I'm going to call it this way. And it's going to be labeled as, so the, sorry, the label is going to, cor to correspond to this effect over here. So it's x to y. Uh, you don't really need to do that. We could uh, directly look at x to y, but it's going to be practical to have, in the end, the direct, indirect, and total effect uh, all in, uh, in in one uh, in one piece in the in the output tables. Um, the second thing I want to do is label my indirect effect. So my indirect effect is actually the product of this effect, the effect of x on m, independent on the mediator, times the effect of the mediator on the outcome variable. So it's going to be x to m times m to y. So that's my indirect effect. What else could I label? We could start there. Another thing we could label is the total effect. Let's say total effect. Total effect is simply the direct plus the indirect. And we can directly use the labels we've created here. And finally, another thing that we could uh, do is calculate, it, calculate the proportion of the effect that is mediated. So it's going to be the ratio of the indirect effect over the total effect. So let's call that pro prop uh, mediated. And it's going to be the indirect effect over the total effect. This is sometimes reported, although it's uh, really uh, not always necessary. So I have my model specified. Here I have my effects. And here I've labeled the different effects or combinations of effects. In this case, that's a product. In this case, that's an addition. In this case, uh, a ratio. So I'm going to run this. OK, so now I have my model as a text object like this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit my model. So let's fit the model now. So to fit the model, you have different functions that you can use in Lavan, but we'll use the function sem. Um, so we're going to create um, a fitted object. Let's call it fit. It's uh, common to call it this way. And we're going to use the sem function in Lavan. The first thing we're going to provide is the model. So the model is simply called model. Of course, if you have several models, we could have named them model 1, model 2, etc. Um, the data set I'm going to use, the data is just called data. Just data. Um, and then we can specify other things. Notably, you might want to, because uh, that's that's commonly done. Uh, if you want to use bootstrapping, you can type SE is equal to bootstrap. I'm not going to do it here, but uh, we could do uh, you, you, you could do that and you can uh, you can then uh, make some changes um, about how the bootstrapping is done. Uh, so just look at the, the Lavan options for that. But we're just gonna run the model here, the mediation model. So Let's run this model. Hopefully it works. OK, seems to have worked. And now I'm going to type summary of this fitted object. OK, let me increase the size here so we can see what we have. Um, so it's a saturated model, so we won't be looking at the fit. However, uh, here, so we have all of the regression effects. And if we look at the defined parameter, the defined effects. We here have the direct effect. We see it's non-significant. We have the indirect effect. We see it's significant. So when the indirect is significant and the direct is not, it is sometimes said that it's a total mediation. Um, here we have the total effect. The total effect is significant as well. And the proportion mediated, uh, we see it's about 18 89% of the effect that is mediated. So 89% of the effect goes through uh, the mediator. And it's also, uh, this is going to be significant uh, whenever uh, you have, um, uh, when you have an indirect effect. So here we have uh, all different elements. And if you want confidence intervals, which you might often get from, um, which you might often want to report, especially if you use bootstrapping, 
earlier. Uh, you can get them by using the parameter estimates function. You see here you get confidence interval. So here the confidence intervals are uh, not calculated through bootstrapping, but you can get them through bootstrapping through bootstrapping. Sorry, if you uh, if you use this uh, this option above, so uh, you might want to report the confidence intervals that are over here. And here you have the estimates of the FX, the standard error, Z value, etc. Um, so I hope that was uh, that was helpful. Um, thank you for watching. And um, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like. And um, and if you want to see more, please uh, please subscribe. Bye.